All right, we're here at the famous Herzegnovi bus station. We'll be back in about three hours to go to Podgorica. But in that three hours, we will explore the old town. Three hours in the old town of Herzegnovi. Very nice. Very good. I like the old football jerseys. Uh, that's my, uh, my husband. He's a fan. Oh. And, uh, the... Cool. Here because I don't allow it in the house. Oh, <laughs> very <laughs> no, nice. Yes, yes. Oh, I think this right here is the famous clock tower, originally constructed during the Turkish era. Now, Montenegro, and especially here, Herzegnovi, has been under a litany of different occupations. Gorgeous old chapel. It has been at different points. <laughs> Those of its history ruled by the Ottoman Turks, by the Venetians, by the Austro-Hungarians, by the French, by the Spanish, Herzegnovi. It is an old town that reflects all of the different empires that have ruled under it, or over it rather. Oh, nice bayous, whoever this guy is can't really read Cyrillic. And as for more recent history, of course, Montenegro was part of Serbia in Montenegro. Here we can see the Serbian flag up until 2006. And before that, it was the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. After World War I, it was the Kingdom of the Slovenes, Serbs, and Croats. And there's a lot of questions to be asked about Montenegrin identity and what it means to be Montenegrin. For although they are fiercely proud and independent people, there are many Montenegrins that associate more closely with the Serbs, while others believe that their identity is truly independent. Either way, the country now is certainly independent. Some of uh, Herceg Novi's finest athletes. Hello, hello. Oh, big kick. <laughs> the young Montenegrin talent. Do him, do him, do him, do him. Even though this city, this town is still ridiculously old, it's 600 years, it's actually one of the newest towns on the Adriatic, which is why it takes the name Herceg Novi, Novi meaning new. The Herceg part of the equation comes from its association with Herzegovina. You know, you have Bosnia and Herzegovina. This was part of the Herzegovina enclave in the southeast, established in the 1380s by King Turtkvo of the Bosnians, and then ruled by Bosnian kings for 200 years until the Turks took over in, I think it was 1482? 1482. Hey, what's up? Nice, Simpsons. I make YouTube video, Herzegnovi. With Willy, W I T H W I L L I E. Can you, can you repeat? With Willy, it's W I T H. I know English, I, I understand. W I L L I E. With Willy. With Willy. With Willy. Uh -huh. You'll find it. These are the Herzegnovian youth, very talented uh, footballers. Oh, you play basketball. That's like me. Cause I'm, well, I play football, but I'm from New York. And in New York, more people play basketball. Soccer. Soccer. This is my good friend, Nikola. He is a Serbian living in Montenegro. And a big Bart Simpson fan. We have Boris, Jovan, and Ivan. Have a nice day, guys. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> I like this guy, Herzegnovi. All right. We've been in Herzegnovi for 30 minutes, and I think we've already met everyone that you need to meet. So the Turks come in end of the 15th century, and they rule the place for 200 years. However, there was a brief interruption, middle of the 16th century, by the Spaniards. They came in, took over, one year of Spanish rule, and then it was Turks, 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 until liberation occurred at the hands of the Venetians. But the Venetians were not so much liberators, as they were conquerors. The Venetians are in town from about 1687 
until the collapse of the Venetian Republic in 1797. So a brief, relatively brief, 100 plus year rule. That Venetian Republic commanding both strips, both flanks of the Adriatic. The Italian side and now what is the Croatian Montenegrin. Little tiny nibble of Bosnian and Albanian side. Ah, a little pocket of that beautiful water. Oh boy, that would have been a way to go. We can see some native Herzegnovians relaxing, enjoying the views. There's the Bay of Kotor over through that way, a little slip past. Now, after the Venetian Republic fell in 1797, Herzeg Novi vacillates back and forth rapidly between different empires. It's ruled by the Austrian Empire, by the Habsburgs, until 1806. 1806, one year of Russian rule. And then the French, the Bonapartists, under Napoleon, they take over. And finally, 1815, Congress of Vienna, that famous diplomatic meeting that settled the map of Europe for more or less another 60 years. Check out this old ruined hotel. Wow, very interesting aesthetic. And it was at the Congress of Vienna that Herzeg Novi, along with the whole of the Dalmatian coast, was awarded to Austria, soon to become Austria-Hungary, until World War II. Did I say World War II? I meant World War I. And after World War I, everything blows up. The kingdom of the Slovenes, Croats, and Serbs comes to fruition. World War II, then Yugoslavia. And in 1992, following warfare and bloodshed and all the republics splitting off and annexing, we have the rump of the FRY, the rump of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. And then finally, 2006, the severance between Serbia and Montenegro and the referendum which makes Montenegro and Herzegnovi its own Montenegrin country. A lot of locals, hello, dobro da. Cernogori? Cernogora, ah. Cernogora, Montenegro. Beautiful country, beautiful women. <laughs> okay, we gotta get out of the sun. I didn't put on any sunblock and I am melting, absolutely melting. Stairs or sun, sun or stairs. I'm gonna sweat through all my goddamn clothes. <laughs> this is crazy down here on the Adriatic. Felvideki Vilmos. There we can see it just like those ladies said. Republica Cernogora. Cernogora. Black Mountain. Cernogora. Oh, dobro dan. Oof, hot. Good pass. Yeah. This is my buddy Dan. He's the gatekeeper for the city. He lets the cars in and he lets the cars out. And now he's telling me a bit about Montenegro and everything you gotta know about life in Cernogora. Good guy, Dan. Great guy. Ta da! Dar she blows, dar she blows. The famous Conley Kula Tower. Dan told me that there's six towers in Montenegro. We saw one of them before, the clock tower. I keep saying Montenegro. In Cernogora? No. <laughs> Herzeg Novi, there are six towers. We saw the clock tower before, aka Tora. This is Conley Kula. He said the Spanish one's all the way up there. Don't know where the other three are. But let's go take a peek at Conley Kula, surrounded by the shrieking birds. Well, if they don't want people to come here, they might as well just say the door's locked. Havala. Agua. Oh. I need, I need. Oh. I can drink? <laughs> like I knew. Ooh. 
Vamos lá. Oh, oh. Ok. Ah. Ok. I see, I see. That's how the master does it. Avala. They got me at the top there. Three euros, no card, only cash. What are you gonna do? Conley Kula. It's also known as the Bloody Tower. And it pretty much is a preserved relic of when the Turkish constructed it after conquering another tower and blasting it to bits in 1482. Opa! <laughs> Look at these guys. <laughs> I love it. I really love it. Check out this old relic. 1855 to 1932. Oh, thank God. This doesn't necessarily look like the safest place to be. I wonder what this was. Some toilets over here. Oh, very interesting old building. Beautiful tree. Oh yes, okay. perfect for some shade. I went about this all wrong. All right, what am I doing? What? I need shade, I need sunscreen, I need a hat, I need a drink. Nothing did it. You go down here, a little slip. No, private property. Fuck. How about that? Study grad? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, bus station. Uh, 200 meters. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure. Somehow we ended up above the bus station. Not supposed to come back up here until 3.30, so I guess we got to go down to the old town again and then come back up. Eh, what are you going to do? Let's try some local Montenegrin beer. That's my goal right now. And perhaps a little nibble. Very, very beautiful, wonderful, amazing. Montenegro. Oh, sweet. Uh, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Sweet, Oh, Irakia. Wow. Cool. Kruska. Morella. Aha. Aiva. Shlipka. Okay. Vinograd. How much? How much? 10 euro. 10 euro. Oh, okay. I need to get the ATM. Okay. Ciao. Havala. Bye. This looks like a chill little place to try some Montenegro beer. Oh, finally. Okay. It's not even Montenegro beer. It's a check. Uh, but I'm so thirsty, I could care less right now. Staro Brahmin. Cold as can be. All right. We gotta head up to the bus now. About one hour to go, there's that clock tower. One last time. Lovely first day, first afternoon in Montenegro. A little bit of a manic scramble. Domatsa Tresnia. Domatsa Tresnia. Beautiful Domatsa Tresnia. 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 Oh, okay. A lot. Perfect. Oh, okay. We finally got the uh, Montenegrin beer, the Nikšiksko. Cheers, cheers. That's Jovia. 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 That's
<risa> uf, uf. Milan. 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 The king. I'm a stand, yeah. Stand. Stand. Stand? Uh-huh. Okay. He's taking me somewhere. Let's go to the bus. We're heading to Podgorica. Gonna meet up with Mareki and Bob Tamash and then head down to Lake Shkadar. Montenegro. What a place. What a fucking place. Here is Maria and she has a beautiful apartment in Herzegnovi. Where is it? It's over there? Old Town. Old Town. Okay. All right. If you come to Herzegnovi, you know you gotta stay with Maria. Okay. All right. Nice to meet you. See you later. That's all she wrote from Herzeg Novi, part one of our Montenegro with Willie series. Tsunagora, Havala. See you soon. We're heading to Lake Skadar.